All of the first images from the James Webb telescope so far have revealed so much new information about the early universe. But naturally, they've also created a lot of buzz with certain articles making a lot of claims that are basically not true. And one article in particular has actually been trending on Twitter with several people asking me for a comment about this. Actually, it was the Australian YouTuber Dave Jones, who I also watch once in a while, and he asked both me and Dr. Becky for an opinion on this relatively recent article that's sort of been trending. The article that says the Big Bang didn't happen. And the article that essentially implies that all of these new observations from the James Webb confirm an idea from the 90s that this particular writer behind this article had, with the idea in this case being that the Big Bang never happened. And so in this video, I wanted to kind of talk about this a little bit without being too critical or maybe too judgmental, but essentially focusing on the facts. And to start, I actually wanted to briefly talk about where I think Eric Lerner, the article author, got things wrong initially, or at least where I think all of this started. It's really from articles like this that I've discussed in one of the previous videos, where the scientists behind this paper gave some of these articles somewhat unfortunate titles and also made a few comments inside the articles, essentially indicating that they were just shocked by all of the new discoveries coming from the James Webb. In this particular case, the paper starts with the word panic, as if the scientists are panicking about new discoveries. But that's actually not at all the case, and if you do read the article, you'll realize that it's basically not at all what the scientists are saying. They're not saying that the new images are breaking physics in any way, or that we're discovering something that was completely unexpected. They're just saying that we're discovering things that were just a little bit different from what we expected. But more importantly, we're discovering a lot of evidence that does suggest Big Bang indeed happened, and happened just as predicted by various studies. So here it's really important to understand that pretty much most of the analysis so far and all of the data coming out is mostly from these early publications on sites like Archive and from a lot of chatter on Twitter. And so because all of this is really coming in super quickly and there's just not enough time to confirm and analyze everything, it's naturally kind of easy to start misinterpreting some of the results or some of the discoveries, especially if the title is maybe somewhat misleading. As a matter of fact, one of the quotes used in the article to present their point is from this astronomer, Dr. Kirkpatrick, who in one of the studies mentioned that Right now, I find myself lying awake at 3 in the morning and wondering if everything I've done is wrong. This was from one of the papers I discussed in one of the previous videos, but she's not saying that the Big Bang did not happen or that our cosmology is completely wrong. She's essentially only questioning the early evolution of the universe because the actual observations, as I mentioned in the video before, seem to be slightly different from what the scientists expected. But claiming that the Big Bang never happened because of that one quote is a huge disservice to the scientific community. But instead of focusing on that article that I personally did not find very interesting, and that is kind of wrong to be honest, I actually wanted to focus on the facts as we know about the Big Bang and why we now believe even more that it very likely did happen. And here we have to start with a bit of a history. As a matter of fact, the history here is super interesting. Have you ever wondered if anyone was even smarter than Einstein? Have you ever wondered if anyone has ever proven him wrong? Well, yes, the answer is yes. And it's a person in this picture. Can you guess which one? It's the priest in the middle. The Belgian Catholic priest that back in the early 20s started to explore the idea of cosmology, reaching some of the conclusions before anyone else, with some of them becoming groundbreaking over time. Actually, before Lemaitre, there was another really important discovery a few years prior. In 1923, Edwin Hubble, confirmed that various spiral nebula that were actually detected by various scientists were not within the Milky Way. They actually were various galaxies across the universe, with many of them really, really far away. This was the beginning of the idea of the universe, and if you'd like to learn more about this, check out one of the previous videos in the description or maybe some right there. And within just a few years after this announcement, Lemaitre started to observe an interesting pattern in a lot of these new observations. Just as the Hubble's original observations, he realized that it seems that a lot of different galaxies, the farther away they are, the more they expand. But then mathematically, he was able to work out that if the universe was actually growing in size from a much smaller point in the past, all of these observations from Hubble would suddenly make sense. In the process also calculating some of the first values for what we now call Hubble constants, although more officially it's known as the Hubble-Lemaitre constant. He then sent all of his observations and calculations to Einstein, who unfortunately dismissed them completely, stating that your calculations are correct, but your physics is abominable. 
So yeah, this guy was quite a character. But then within just a few years, this guy was proven wrong. The guy in the middle was proven correct. And Einstein had to concede because Lemaitre has just discovered the idea behind Big Bang. But it became pretty clear that the universe was growing in size. Several other scientists joined in and started to realize something else. For example, George Gamow that you see right here realized that it wasn't just about the mass, it was also about the radiation and the photons. And specifically, as the universe grew in size, the density of the photons and the energy would increase. But if you were to go back in time, it would increase to the point where the universe was very likely extremely hot. So hot, as a matter of fact, that a lot of the early atoms would very likely be ionized, leaving behind a kind of a radiation sign that should still be visible even today. In other words, he predicted something that was discovered decades later. He predicted the cosmic microwave background radiation. And honestly, there is absolutely no way to explain this without the Big Bang. We see this radiation coming from every direction. As a matter of fact, part of the static on the old TVs that we used to use with antenna was the result of cosmic microwave background radiation interacting with the TV's antenna. So the CMB is definitely real. But explaining this without the expansion of the universe from much, much smaller state is practically impossible. Several scientists have tried to do so, but all of their ideas have so far been disproven because they don't really explain everything. This, however, does. CMB is a very important part of the expanding universe. And the ideas from the Big Bang suggest that at some point the universe was just extremely hot and no atoms could even exist here. More importantly, if you were to try to trace back all of this based on the modern observations, as you can see being done right here in one of the papers you can find in the description, you'll discover that it all seems to kind of start around 13.8 billion years ago. And that of course implies that, well, there was some kind of a beginning for all of this. So is that the Big Bang? Well, the answer to that is a little bit tricky. In the past, that's what the scientists referred to as the Big Bang. Actually, okay, a little bit incorrect. The term Big Bang was proposed by Fred Hoyle, a British astronomer that was actually a proponent of a completely different idea. As a matter of fact, he was one of the earliest critics of the Big Bang theory. And so he was actually arguing for the steady state model of the universe that tries to suggest that the universe is the same everywhere, no matter where you go, no matter when you go. But the modern observations suggest otherwise. But more importantly, this does not explain where CMB came from at all. But during his arguments, he basically said that the universe did not just start with a big bang. And that was the birth of this particular term. But more importantly to the topic at hand, we have so much more proof of the idea of the Big Bang from all of the observations from modern telescopes, including Hubble and now James Webb. So first of all, as I've discussed in one of the previous videos, some of the earlier observations from the Hubble telescope determined that the universe was indeed much warmer billions of years ago. There should be a video about this somewhere right there, or maybe in the description. This by itself definitely suggests that the universe cooled down over time, and the only possible explanation for this is that, well, the universe expanded, decreasing the density of the energy, and thus decreasing the temperature. But more importantly, the observations from the James Webb have now started to also uncover these very distant galaxies around the same time we believe galaxies started forming, but in this case, not as developed and more importantly, much, much smaller in size. And that kind of aligns with all of the ideas behind the growth of the universe and behind the Big Bang. Oh wait, I forgot to mention something. Okay, so today there's a bit of a misconception with what Big Bang actually means. It doesn't mean that the universe just exploded 13.8 billion years ago, creating everything we have. Today, this whole thing is called the Big Bang. The entire expansion of the universe in the last 13.77 billion years. That's what the scientists actually refer to when they talk about Big Bang, not just that one point somewhere right there in the beginning. And that's of course really important to understand because by saying that Big Bang did not happen or doesn't exist, that person is essentially saying that the expansion of the universe is not happening either. The universe is not growing, the galaxies are not moving apart, and the universe is the same everywhere no matter where you go. Well, it doesn't seem to be the case based on the observations, and especially the observations from the James Webb. These galaxies are moving away from us, and really fast. Tens and even hundreds of thousands of kilometers per second. That's why they're so redshifted. On top of this, every single one of these observations from the James Webb so far has actually showed us that the galaxies were much less evolved and much smaller in size before, with a lot of large-scale structures only being developing and not really complete yet. 
Actually, most of this evidence comes from the Hubble telescope, but even the James Webb seems to be showing the same. And by design, the James Webb is really only meant to observe certain parts of the universe. And specifically, it was designed to look back at the time when the universe was only about 50 million years old, or maybe slightly younger. It was never really meant to look farther than that. And so it's not actually going to be seeing some of the first moments when, for example, the cosmic microwave background was created, because it's not designed to see that. But from what it has seen so far, and all of these distant galaxies discovered, two things become clear. First, the universe definitely expands and has been expanding, as predicted by the Big Bang Theory. Okay, but then what did the scientists question? Why did we have studies with unusual titles, or the astronomers saying that they have trouble sleeping because of these new discoveries? Well, here it actually has something to do with the evolution of early galaxies. The initial evolution of some of these early galaxies did not progress as the scientists originally predicted. It looks like the galaxies were able to form much earlier, developing into larger structures and into more cohesive structures with more success than some of the early simulations predicted. And that's of course what the scientists are currently questioning. They're basically questioning some of these simulations we have and some of the early predictions about how early galaxies formed. Something here doesn't match. Everything else though matches exactly. And so the Big Bang Theory is not questioned by anyone that does these studies. However, what is being questioned is what exactly happened to these early galaxies to form them so quickly and to make them the way they are. It's actually more of a question of some of the early particles and potentially some of the ideas in regards to dark matter or something else mysterious going on here that very likely affected these early galaxies as the universe was expanding in the first 200 million years. But I guess more importantly, all of these images from the James Webb, all of these new galaxies discovered, everything here actually confirms everything we've always believed about the universe. There is absolutely nothing here to suggest that any of the major theories are incorrect. As a matter of fact, it's quite the opposite. Everything here confirms modern cosmology. For example, the strange landing effect here confirms that there is the mysterious dark matter in this particular cluster. These redshifted galaxies confirm that the universe is expanding really fast the farther back you look. And the fact that these galaxies are much smaller and much less developed confirms that the evolution of the universe most likely progressed as the scientists initially predicted, with certain inconsistencies. And so, the conclusion here is that the Big Bang, right now, is the best theory we have that explains the cosmology and the beginning of the universe as we know it. We still obviously don't really know what happened, for example, in the first few seconds of the universe, and there's obviously still confusion about what happened before the universe began, or what's going to happen to the universe at the end. But there are quite a lot of propositions about all of this, and you can actually find some of them in the older videos in the description. On that note, I'm personally looking forward to more and more images from the James Webb, because so far this has been a really groundbreaking and somewhat mind-blowing journey, showing us that there is just so much detail that nobody thought would be even visible until the telescope became operational. And so it's only a matter of time before the scientists discover even more distant galaxies, or possibly even more unusual unexpected objects at the outskirts of the early universe. And before I finish, Thank you Dave for asking the question and for bringing this to my attention, and also check out the video from Dr. Becky, who mentioned that she's going to be explaining her point on this as well. And so until future discoveries, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that now features James Webb Telescope as well. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.